In the next 11 minutes, I'm going to teach you how to color grade S-Log3 footage on DaVinci Resolve. We'll talk about camera settings, exposure, and why coloring on DaVinci Resolve is very easy once you understand my process. Before we get to coloring, the very first thing I want to show you is how to get the right image quality settings on your camera so that you're going to have your videos exposed correctly for S-Log3. First, you want to go to your image quality settings and enable log shooting. Choose flexible ISO, change color gamma to slog 3sign slash slog 3 The next thing you need to do is go to your color slash tone settings, then choose select lot. Either you choose rec 709 or you can play around with other color settings. So that way you kind of get like a quick preview of what the footage is going to look like. The next thing you want to pay attention to is your exposure meter. So I usually shoot between plus 1.3 to somewhere around plus 1.7, especially for me, like, you know, I'm a darker skin tone. So I usually shoot around plus 1.7. All right, now let's get to the fun part where I'm going to show you how I color grade some S-Log3 footage that I shot on my FX3. Let's get to color grading. So let's go. The very first thing that I do is on the editing tab, I'm going to use um, adjustment layer, right? Using an adjustment layer is going to speed your process, especially if you have a, a lot of clips, right? Like right now, I have a timeline with just a few clips, but sometimes I can have a timeline with like 50 to 60 clips. I do not want to individually have to like make corrections and stuff, right? So I'm just going to create an adjustment layer. And to use an adjustment layer, we just have to go to the toolbox, right? And then you can search adjustment clip, right? Adjustment clip right here. Sorry, I call it adjustment layer, adjustment clip, whatever um, it is, it's still the same thing. And um, I'm going to spread it across my entire video. So what's going to happen now is whatever effect or transition, anything that I put on this clip is going to um, affect anything that's under the clip, right? And I can easily disable it and enable it by just pressing the D button and stuff. So now after I select the adjustment layer, the next thing I'm going to do is go to the color tab. And yes, I know this looks very scary. Like my very first time opening Resolve and go to the color tab, I was like, holy cow, what is this stuff? But luckily I had some experience with Photoshop. So that definitely makes life easier. If you have some experience with Photoshop, you're going to understand this in a snap, right? Because coloring and using nodes is pretty much the same thing as layers on Photoshop, right? First, we have the the, the folders, you know, like your lot folders where you can put, have all your lots and your favorites and other good stuff. We're going to go talk about that shortly. Um, but before we do that, I do want to just go over this panel right here, right? So this is where your nodes are going to be. And one easy way to understand nodes is nodes is not really like an effects panel, right? It's not like you're adding effects on top of each other. Think of it as you're in a train and the train is passing through a track, right? And whatever you, you apply to it in the first point is going to pass through to the next one, which is also going to pass through to the next one. Since I know that I'm going to use four nodes, all I have to do is right click and go to node, go to corrector, and um, I'm just going to drop it right, right here, right? See that like when I move it around, it goes to the yellow, boom. Now this is linked to this, right? So if you look at it, this is like a train passing by from here to here right and i'm gonna make this my bottom one so i'm just gonna move it down and then i'm gonna create another node and drop it and i'm gonna drop it right here right so essentially what's happening is this is passing through to this it's passing through to this and all of them are kind of like sandwiched to each other to make whatever effect that you're creating so sometimes i can drop an effect here and it's not really a color effect it's just something else right which we're gonna go through and color corrector again and i'm going to drop it here so voila i have my four nodes is because i've colored a million times and i know exactly how you know how i color and what i'm going to use and the rest is just tweaking things as to go okay another thing that's very important is you want to make sure that your adjustment layer is selected um because resolve is when you go to the color tab resolve is going to select whatever is on top right when we go to the edit this is what's on top right if I have like this footage on top and I go to the color tab, you're going to see that the footage is what's selected at first. So it's very important to make sure that, you know, just to check and make sure. So there are so many ways to color grade on Resolve. And when I started converting my footage from S-Log3 to Rec. 709 and all that good stuff, 
I started using um, color space transform and that is a really good strategy and a good way to color grade but I found something a little more simpler more cinematic so my exact system is I use a pre-made lot by phantom lots right it's called phantom lots by joel and what they've done is they are professional colorists already and this is not a sponsored video or anything i just I, you know i've been using these lots for the past six months seven months or so and it's been really fantastic so they're cinematic lot they look really good um as you can see right here i have my phantom lots over here and i'm just gonna go for the sony fx3 i have one for you know osmo pocket 3 and fx3 and i'm going to try different ones right just from coloring and using this lot i naturally just always start with the with the neutral right because using the neutral allows me to play around more and gives me more flexibility and keep in mind that i'm using the foundation lot as the last on purpose right a lot of people color and they put it in the beginning but i put that as last and i'm going to explain the why in a second right because remember i said it's like a trend passing through and i want this to be applied last i don't know why i want it to be applied first because if i have this first anything i do afterwards is first gonna pass through the foundation lot first, right? So I kind of want my foundation lot to be the last thing on the sandwich. Now we're walking back in reverse. The next thing I'm gonna do is I can just start tweaking it now, but I actually use another lot, right? So all I've I've joined multiple lots together. This is kind of like a customized lot that I've been working with for a very long time. So this is the second lot that I use. It's called the BMD film. It's a really good lot as well but one thing is we're gonna need to reduce it a lot right you know i just use it to like half points already and if you can see like this is already kind of looking good but it's not where i want it to be right now if you can see like using the adjustment layer um just having these those two lots there the footage is already looking pretty good the next thing i'm gonna do is go to my second node and i'm going to use film grain so using the film grain it makes your video a little more cinematic it gives you that artistic approach to your video it's not something that you need to do but it's just something that i like to do especially if i shoot like more of like a darker cinematic scene i definitely want to see some film grain on it and it just makes your videos look a lot more clean then let's get to the fun part one thing that i know with every video that i shoot is that these three nodes are always going to work the only part that gets tricky is when we need to start adjusting the color wheels and start making sure the footage is clean and stuff right so like right here this footage doesn't look you know it doesn't look bad it kind of looks clean already what i'm going to do now is i'm going to also increase the contrast right so i might go into like 0 0.7 0 0.8 you know just kind of like based on how the footage feels and i leave it at that now let's say this footage is a little you know too orange and i want to like just balance the color all i have to do is come to the color temperature and i'm going to balance it out right now what i'm going to do is look at okay let me look at like each footage specifically and see what i need to adjust right so let's just find one for example i want to find a easy one okay we can pick this footage right i can see that this footage is a little dark right so what i need to do is make some adjustments to to um, bring it up and you see that immediately when i want to color it still has my adjustment layer selected so what you now need to do is make sure you select this right here right now i have the footage selected and you see that when i selected it it is um, it has no notes or no color on it, right? Right. That's because all our colors is on the adjustment layer. Then the next thing I will do is one, make sure it's clicked. Now I can mess around with the lift and the gamma. Sometimes you can just increase the shadow a little bit, right? Depending on the footage, or you can play around with the lift and the gamma, right? So as you can see right there, now I'm like, you know, exposing the footage properly because I just increased the lift. A little bit now there is one more thing i do want to show which is on the skin tone if you can see this footage right here it you know it like my hands was a little dark and it's a little brownish right it got to brownish and i a lot of time like if i'm shooting top down videos on my table it gets really brownish and it might be too much for me right that i like what i'll do is i'll make sure that i have the clip selected then i'm going to go to my curves then i'm going to go right here to heal versus sat and i'm just going to select 
the color right so i selected like a right on my hand where there's a lot of brown and the cool thing i like is i can reduce the amount of brown that's popping right so you see that that's reducing it this is probably not a good example but you get what i mean right so like i can reduce it right there if i need to increase it i can increase it you know here versus like a specific color and stuff and this helps a lot i'm just trying to find like an example okay so this is a perfect example so like if we look at this footage i kind of messed up on the white balance right it's a little too bluish on a sunny day um so i'm gonna click on the clip and then i can easily just change the temperature right here all right just to like give it a little more orange right there and that kind of looks better and you see how fast that is right it is so quick to color grade when you're using adjustment layer and also one last thing to remember is you want to work in reverse the reason why you want to work in reverse when it comes to node is because if i put the main lot first anything i'm doing next is always going to pass through the main lot first before it gets applied to the to the next node right and using this strategy means that if i need to co control the contrast if i need to control the lift or that is going to happen first before the color is applied to the video all right guys that is my step-by-step -step process on how i color grade s-log3 footage on davinci resolve let me know what you'd like to learn next and don't forget to hit the like button subscribe so i can share more videos with you let's go